Hey guys, welcome to this uh, shortwave radio video, and uh, I will be doing a daytime scan of the longwave band. So yesterday, um, you've seen me do a nighttime scan with uh, my Texan PL990X. I'll do it with the Texan PL H501X, and uh, we're going to have a daytime scan. Uh, propagation is a little different, daytime, nighttime, and longwave. Typical for very long distance, nighttime is better. But sometimes you have surprises, and some of them sometimes pop up in the daytime, don't in the nighttime. So, anyways, um, it's midday here. It's uh, pretty much close to noon, uh, which is 16 hours universal time. And we're going to go through the long wave band, and we're going to actually check what non directional beacons we're going to actually hear on the radio. So let's uh, start tuning around now. Non-directional beacons don't start pretty much below 200 kilohertz for the most of them. And uh, so we're going to go fast up to here. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to enable sideband so that we can hear even weak signals pop up. As you hear an airplane passing overhead. So let's check that out. this one and we'll calibrate the tone so we'll try to calibrate it it's pretty much there close enough so let's uh, this is UL of course this is one of the ones that are going to be decommissioned from the local airport here and uh, let's put it back in the end so what are we going to get Oops. One on 260, 260 kilohertz. This is UFX. This one I hear it even in the daytime, the one that I heard last night, 260 kilohertz in uh, St. Felix de Valois. And by the way, tonight I will be doing a scan of the long wave signals in the park. Uh, I'm going to wait till uh, about 9 p.m., an hour after sunset, and go to the park with the radio, and we're going to tune in where it's probably much more quiet, and we're going to be seeing if we actually get anything weaker that is worth checking out.
This is four zero seven. Four zero seven. This is uh, St. Hubert Airport and the Morse code of uh, this station. ZHU. St. Hubert Airport is just to the south of Montreal, very close to uh, Montreal, actually, uh, south southeast of Montreal. Definitely going to be more interesting tonight, uh, so uh, we're going to be checking that out. But um, definitely at night, it's a much better time. One of the characteristics of long wave, um, as you move up, so for example, just to be uh, fair here, because long wave is, you know, qualified as everything and below 500 kilohertz in general on most radios. It's not exactly true. Long wave is below 300 kilohertz. Uh, starting at 300 kilohertz and up to 3000 kilohertz, so from 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz, you actually are in medium wave, that, that by definition. But most radios will tell you all below 500 kilohertz is long wave. So uh, UL, once again, we'll be checking it out almost every day. Uh, as uh, this is supposed to be decommissioned. Some interesting things, uh, though, on the list, um, of course. I always use the uh, William Hamburn list of non-directional beacons every time I, I tune. And um, I've got it, of course, on my tablet computer here so that I can actually check it out and check the beacon lists. Um, <coughs> Sheldon Harvey has mentioned to me this morning that he actually heard one from, I believe, from the from Ontario that actually is decommissioned according to this list, but is still on. That means you can have a lot of surprises if you tune around the long wave band in search of these signals. You might actually hear some that they say decommissioned. Don't be surprised. Maybe they turned it back on for some reason. Maybe it was never shut down. I don't know. But uh, that's an interesting one, and um, I hope to be able to really, really check that out uh, a lot better tonight at the park. I think it's going to be a nice little evening urban de-expedition to the local park here, and uh, it's going to be interesting to test out. I'm going to do several scans for sure there, and uh, as I'm at the park, I probably will do a scan of shortwave and see what the radio will also get with uh, the telescopic antenna. Um, for listening to long wave, by the way, the internal ferrite of your radio is actually quite an amazing antenna, much better than a lot of people think. Uh, it's not because it's inside the radio, but not every radio is built equally. There are radios that are better, and um, maybe that also today is um, something that are going to be interesting comparing several of my radios on long wave with some of these beacons especially the ones that are weaker and see if they all can receive at a decent level um, we're going to try to do a battle of the long wave radios today so if you see me take out a lot of little radios that i tune long wave with and especially comparing them to the 990x and h501x that i know are great radios for long wave listening um, and they typically have a longer ferrite internal ferrite and don't forget that the 990x and the texan h501x for any dxer of long wave beacons or long wave in general 
accept external antennas for the long wave band, which is not something we see very often in portable radios. So I hope you enjoyed the videos today and you enjoyed the fact that, uh, you know, a little diversion out of shortwave, more into the down, uh, the basement of uh, radio, as they often call it. And uh, actually, I'm having fun. It's uh, kind of a, it, it took, you know, sometimes it's sad, it takes a sad event that's turning off some of the beacons to actually start tuning around and enjoy something that you don't do a lot so uh, don't don't wait till it's there you know tune and and scan the long wave bands and and search for these beacons um, you might be surprised if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thank you for watching